Zero Accounting Software 2023 Rental Income Setup Items. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Ugg slippers. I usually walk around my home in just my socks, but I wanted a high quality pair of slippers that didn't have a heel on them so I can slip them on easily give me a little bit more warmth than just my socks provide and which has a sole on them so I can deal with messes in the home such as spilled liquid or broken glass without getting my socks wet or my feet cut up and the Ugg slippers do a great job with that. I like the quality of the slippers. They feel like they're going to last a long time. They will probably outlast me so I recommend the Ugg slippers. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation, that being get great guitars. Duplicating tabs to put reports in. We're gonna right click the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab and duplicating again. Back to the tab to the middle, accounting dropdown. We wanna open the balance sheet. Then we'll tab to the right. We want to open the accounting dropdown, this time the income statement, but the comparative income statement, the one we set up in a prior presentation comparing January and February, currently working on the month of February. If you don't have that one, you could just open the normal income statement. Tabbing to the left, we're going to change the date range. We're going to select the dropdown custom range if I it, and then go into 2023, end of it and update so there we have it so we're going to imagine we're going to be adding another form of income to our business so in our business we've currently been generating revenue by selling guitars buying guitars marking them up and then selling them and uh we now we want to and we've done some guitar lessons as well now we're going to imagine that we're going to have rental income so i'm over here on the income side of things and we're going to imagine we're going to add rental income to the mix. Now, as we do that here, first, we're going to be setting up uh, the foundational items that we're going to use and think through the process of a rental kind of uh, system that we might set up for generating income. So first, we might think about the type of income account that we want to be impacted. We don't need to set up another income account, but we could, right? We could say I could just put it into another form of service, that being a rental income. But I might put it into another new account called rental income and have our items go to that new account as well. So that's what we'll do. We'll add another account. But I just want to point out to be careful when you're thinking about the number of income accounts that you're setting up because generally you don't want a whole lot of income accounts and the place where people usually get mixed up is sometimes people start to create income accounts by customer, meaning they try to assign their income accounts by each customer having a different income account. You don't usually want to do that in part because you can run other reports which will break the information out by customer. Although there are exceptions to that rule. For example, if you're getting paid through like platforms like a YouTube or something like that, then you might just say your customer is basically YouTube and you might just call it YouTube revenue. You might have a different line item in part because you're just recording directly to it with like bank feeds. But if you're doing a full accounting process, usually you don't want to set up your income accounts by customer, but rather by general category. Uh, the other thing that people often do is they set up their income accounts too detailed by a very specific category. So in our example, for example, we wouldn't want to set up a different income account 
for each guitar that we sell, in part because we can run other reports breaking out the sales by item that we sell if we're properly tracking the items uh, that we're selling usually. So that's why we just have these two categories of service and sales, sales being the inventory that we're selling, service being everything else. I'm gonna add one other account for our rental income. Let's do that first, go into the tab to the left. We're gonna go into our accounting dropdown and let's go into our chart of accounts. Here's the chart with the accounts of it, the chart of the accounts. Now they have this nice system in zero that I can go to the revenue accounts. Those are the ones I wanna be looking at here. So let's tab on over to the revenue. And so we've got sales, we've got service, and now let's make another one for rental income, which I'm gonna make 4350, let's say. So let's say add a new one. Uh, we wanna say add an, an account. I'm gonna type in the code 4350. Account type is gonna be an income type of account. Come on in, income. Uh, so we'll say, have I been saying rev revenue or sales? I'll say it's a sales type of account, but the name is gonna be uh, rental income. And so there we have it. Tax is, we don't have any ta uh, tax exempt, I'm gonna say in general. And so the default tax setting for this account and so I'm gonna say, if I choose, by the way, revenue, ah, let's go to, let's keep it at sales and I'll say tax exempt. All right, and so I'm gonna say save it. And so there we have it. So there's our rental income. And now I'm gonna set up some items that will be pointing to that rental income. So I'm gonna go to my drop down up top for the uh, business and go down to the products and service. I call them product or service items. Now let's take a look at the flow chart just so we can see, get an idea of how this is gonna work so we can populate our items. So I'm gonna go to a, this is a screenshot of the QuickBooks desktop, but we're just looking at the flow, so which would be the same for most accounting systems to try to think about what the flow will look like in terms of forms so that we can then plan out how this is going to work. So we're, we have in our shop, we have guitars and equ guitar equipment. We are imagining here basses, drums, and so on and so forth. And we're thinking for another revenue source, we can rent out as opposed to just selling the items that we have on hand. So how would that work? We can imagine someone would call in maybe and request that they want to have a band set to be rented, right? So we're gonna say, all right, they call in, maybe we make an estimate at that point in time and then possibly we get a down payment when they reserve the equipment so that we can then lock them in to that actual reservation so we don't double book the equipment. And then you would think that would be a receive money. So when we get the down payment, we have this prepayment situation. We have unearned revenue. We got paid before we did the work, before we provided the equipment. So we'll have to deal with that. And then uh, when they actually rent the equipment, we'll have an invoice that we can generate from the estimate. And then of course, from that point, we'll have the normal kind of process, which means we would receive the rest of the payment, uh, applying out the prepayment to it, the credit amount, and then we can record the deposit and so on and so forth. So that's the general flow that we will have. The other thing we wanna keep in mind is that if someone is calling in for an estimate, about renting equipment, possibly for a band session or whatever they're, they're doing on a weekend, then do we wanna have each of the items, each guitar, each piece of drum set, each amp listed separately so they have complete customization for the amount of rental that they want? Usually no, I would suggest, because that will be too chaotic of a system oftentimes. And if they don't clear a minimal amount of rental, income, it's probably not worth our time to be renting the equipment. So oftentimes you might think, well, how am I gonna group this together so whoever's calling or taking calls for someone who wants to rent equipment can do this as easily as possible. So you might have like a set band set, right? So we might say, this is the minimum that you could rent. It includes two guitars, a microphone, drum set, amplifier, whatever. 
and then possibly you can customize it from that point, switching out more expensive guitars or having another amp or something like that. That's how you might kind of set up your baseline items. Remembering when you set up your items, you, this is gonna be the underlying foundational thing that you wanna make as well as possible so that the actual process of doing business and doing the rental will be easily to flow through the forms. So let's, we're in our items again, business drop down. we're in our products and services. So let's set up our baseline item, which is just gonna be a band set rental, a, a standard rental set. So we'll hit the drop down. I'm sorry, new item. And we're gonna say it's gonna be band set rental. So, and we'll just say this is package number one, let's say. And I'm just gonna say that's the same name and code. We're not having any inventory. We're not tracking the inventory. We're gonna be giving them physical things, but we're not selling those physical things. We're just renting them. We're not gonna have to purchase this stuff. So I'm not gonna, I'm gonna uncheck the purchase. We're gonna sell it. And let's say that the sales price for our band set, I'm just gonna say 2000. I have no idea. I'm just making up a number here. And then I'm gonna put it into my new sales account that we set up which is the sales rental uh, income. And then uh, I'm gonna say it's tax exempt because we're not actually selling inventory, so I'm not gonna record any tax to it, but if it was taxed in whatever region you're in, you can apply uh, the tax to it. And then in the description, maybe I say what's included in here. We'll say, you know, two guitars, drum set, mic, microphone uh microphone i was just checking we have spell check yes microphone uh what else amplifier amp and so i think that's i think that's good so we'll say that's what's included in our standard set you have so you have to buy that uh if you want the rental we don't go under that if you only want one guitar cool it still costs two thousand dollars so you might as well take the two of them and then when they come in, they can pick the guitars that are in the category possibly of that range of rental. All right, so then we're gonna say, but maybe you got, maybe we can customize it a little bit, say uh, if they buy that baseline, but then uh, they want an added guitar. Uh, so, or something like that. We say, well, you can add to it maybe if you want like three guitars or if you wanna improve your guitar maybe. So we'll say new item. And I'm going to say this is going to be, uh, uh, what did I call it? Uh, band set rental guitar. Let's say band rent, let's say rental added guitar. So added guitar and we'll say boom, boom. We're not going to track it again. This is just renting out the added guitar. And if they want an added guitar, that is going to cost, uh, let's say $50, $50 per added guitar. That's also going to go into the rental income tax exempt. There we hope, there we go. And let's add one more. Let's add, let's say they like they, if they want to make it really loud and they want to add an extra amp or maybe upgrade the amp so they can really piss off the neighbors. So we'll say rental added amp or amp upgrade or something like that. And so we'll say it's an amp upgrade uh, and that's gonna be $40. You do that and you're sure to have caused trouble. If the cops don't show up, then you get your money back after blasting out with this set of stuff rental income all right so there we have that and so we'll save that and so let's say that's our baseline stuff so where's my uh let's see do i have can i see everything here is that everything i got where did the other two go we've got the band set and we've got the here they are the rental added amp and added guitar. So now, uh, next time we'll go through and start to add this in. So now everything's set up. 
And if you had someone on the phone, some some punk kid teenager that's on the phone working the shop while you're out, you know, doing whatever you're doing, then they should have everything to be able to set it up, even though the punk kid teenager is kind of not the brightest, you know, uh, punk on the block or whatever. So, so then if someone calls in, they could just be like, they're like, we want a drum set. And the punk kid teenager that we have working for us is like, oh, dude, we do rental. We rent stuff now. Let me, let me do an estimate for you. And so they could go down and do a quote. And then, and then, you know, within the quote, they can select the items. So you, and they're like, we just want like one guitar or something. The punk teenager knows that they're like, no, dude, you have to, you have to take like the whole band set baseline two hundred dollars. And then if you want to add a guitar, then you can. So then, if they wanted to add a guitar or an amp, then they can add it. So that's kind of how it would set up. And then we can. And then we can get a down payment based on this and so on and so forth. We'll go from there uh, next time. But that's the general idea. I'm not going to record it yet, but we'll because we'll do this next time. So I'm just going to go back to the dashboard and go out of there. We haven't changed anything to the actual financial statements yet. Uh, so we don't need to look at the trial balance. So we will say adios for now, amigos. Uh, but <laughs> and we'll we'll start to do the rental uh, revenue making next time.